Cami, and today we're going to be diving into iOS development by creating a simple positive quotes generator. Now, if you've never coded with Xcode before or in Swift, I'd like to think that this is a really fun project to get started on, and especially just something to cool to share with your friends if you're interested. While we're not going to dive into all of the intense descriptions of everything in Xcode, we're going to go over just enough so you can get started playing around and creating your own projects. First things first, we're going to have to install Xcode. Now, unfortunately, you do need an Apple computer in order to do this process, as well as a decent amount of space on your computer. It should be found in the Apple Store on your MacBook, and once you install, it might take a little bit of time to actually go through the process of installing all of the components, so just be a little bit prepared for that. But once this is installed, let's go ahead and see what we're going to be creating. Here's an example of what our project will look like when it's all finished. All it has is one button that says click me and once you follow its instructions, it'll give you different positive quotes that you've entered into the application. Now this is just something fun to, you know, show off to your friends and say, hey, look at the app I made. So with that, let's go ahead, navigate to Xcode, create a new Xcode project. Now once this initial setting comes up, make sure you've selected iOS app, click next, and you're going to give yourself a product name. So in this case, you can call it my app or my quotes generator, or I might just call mine positive quotes. Now you can go ahead and leave all of the default settings for this. Your team typically, if you have an Apple developer account, this is where you enter that information. But if you don't have one, that's totally okay. Just make sure that the interface selected is storyboards, the language is Swift, and we're not going to be using tests or core data in this project, so you can go ahead and click next. Once this happens, it's going to ask you where you would like to install this project onto your uh, Apple Mac. And you can go ahead and go with the default settings, or in my case, I store mine in my desktop or in my developer folder. You can also check mark the Create Git repository if you're a friend who likes to share their projects using GitHub. Next, click Create. Now, once your project loads, it should show up with this informational screen. Now, this most certainly seems like a lot of information, especially if this is your first time using Xcode. However, we're not going to worry about this for now. What is important to note is that this main screen here is going to be where we do a majority of our informational aspects of our project, as well as our coding. Now, this pane here over on the right, you can actually collapse it with the top right corner button. This is going to be called our attributes panel. And on the opposite side, over on your far left, you have the navigation panel, which you also can close with this little panel up right next to the close button. From this point, you have a couple files that have been loaded for you already. AppDelegate.swift is actually just a basic code file that Apple sets up that we don't have to mess with today. Scene Delegate, likewise, is another preloaded Apple helper that pretty much sets up the majority of your application to run as normal. The ViewController.swift file, however, is going to be the main focus we use today, as this directly correlates to, as you see in main.storyboard, an initial blank screen that looks like what you would see on your phone. So pretty much, this is called a view controller, and it's linked up to our viewcontroller.swift file, and this is where we're going to be adding different components to our application, different buttons, our labels, and with that, let's dive right in. So in order to first add just some colors and mess around with what Xcode looks like, we're going to tap on just anywhere on the screen. You should see that the view is selected, and this sort of uh, breakdown of what's a part of your view controller. And from that, if you go over to this right panel, the attributes panel, you can see something just called a background. And as you would in a different pages document or on a Google document, you can customize your application how you want. So with this point, let's just add a pretty background onto our app. So if I look at some of my previously used colors, you know, I'm really feeling the purple today. But if you don't want the purple, you can select any of the system ones. Or if you have a custom color, you can click custom at the bottom and see this quite familiar colors wheel with different options for you to choose from. But for me right now, the purple is just the vibes that I'm going for. From this point, we're going to want to add our main features to our application. Now, if you noticed, we had three main components of the app that we tested. There were two labels and then there was a button. So you might be wondering, how can we add these? Well, we're going to go up to this little plus button at the top right corner. This is called the object library. And once you click this plus button, you have dozens of different components that you can truly drag and drop onto your application. And you should see right up at the top, a label. If you don't, you can also use the search mechanic and search up a label. And all you're going to do is drag it and drop it anywhere onto your application. Now, don't like where you dragged it? That's okay. You can slide it anywhere around. And there's also something called constraints that we're not going to quite dive into today but that allow you to customize your app to look exactly how you'd like it. So in this case, we're gonna make our label a bit bigger by just dragging it around and keeping it sort of at the top of the screen. Totally up to you how you want this to look. But once again, you might be thinking, well, how can we change it? How can we make it look pretty? So we're gonna go back up to the attributes panel 
And first off, let's change the text. I'm just gonna say welcome to our quotes generator. Now you might see something weird, and that's that it only says welcome to our quotes dot dot dot. And pretty much what's happened is it doesn't have enough space for the rest of the quotes with how much space we've given it. But you might be wondering, well, why doesn't it just go into multiple lines? And that's because right now the attribute is said to only have one line. So you can click it until it goes up, or you can also just go to zero lines and so it'll just take up as much space as it needs to. So usually I just say line equals zero. Now I'm also going to change the alignment to just be in the middle. And you know, I'm thinking that we gotta make our font a little bit more interesting. So let's go over to the font. Right now it says System 17. If you click the little T by fonts, you can actually go up to font, select custom, and have a lot more options. So in this case, I'll just follow what we had originally. And let's just use American typewriter or whatever you're interested in. And I'm going to make the size just a bit bigger. That works. Now, not super excited about it still? Well, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's go down to where this third main section, or one, two, three, the fourth main section is. And let's add a shadow onto it. In this case, I'll make just like a white shadow background, a two width, and just a one height, just to make it pop a little bit. So you can go ahead and change the shadow, change the font, make it however you like. You can also add things like a background onto your text, you can change the stretching of it, you can change how it like behaves, you can like say you can click on it, it'll change color, anything that you're interested in. But I'm happy with this for now. And so I'm actually just going to click on this component, and I'm going to copy it down a little bit lower for our second label. However, if you do want to just completely start fresh, you can always go back up to that plus button for the object library and drag and drop a new label onto it. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and change this and just say a positive quote to start with. So I hope your day is as awesome as you are. I'm going to make this a little bit wider so that it's a bit different from our title above. Lastly, we're going to add our button. So to do that, we're going to go back up into the object library, find button, or if it doesn't show up automatically, you can search for it like this. And we're going to go ahead and drop it right below our second label. Now, once again, just like any other component, you can edit the button as much as you want. So in this case, I'll just say, click me. And you know, it's looking a little small, so let's just make it a little bit wider. And to make it look different than the text, let's go ahead and add a background to it. So you can go over to the attributes panel, scroll down to the bottom where it says background, and add whatever background interests you. So in this case, I'll just make it a white background and change this text up at the font to be the same color as our other features. As well as go in and we can edit the font to match the rest of our app. So that works for me. However, I will show you one fun little trick that I use to make my buttons look a little bit better. And that is actually go into the attributes panel and click on this little identifier inspector, identity inspector. If you click on this, it looks like a little newspaper or ID in my opinion. And it actually has something called user defined runtime attributes. And this is pretty much attributes that aren't shown here in the attributes inspector. So in this case, let's say we want a button that has rounded corners. In order to do that, we're gonna click on the plus button and we're gonna type, make sure that it's typed exactly without any extra capitals or anything like that, just cause it is case sensitive. We're gonna type layer period corner capital R for radius. We're gonna change the type to a number and just enter kind of like a degree of how much you want it to change. So I'm going to just say a number like 15. You can experiment with this on your own to see exactly how round you want your button to be. And you might be wondering afterwards, well, why didn't it change? And that's because since it's not directly included on this attributes panel, you actually have to run your project in order to have it work. So you might be wondering, well, how do I run my project? In order to run your app, you're going to want to first identify exactly what your um, view controller is built on. So you can check that out by looking down at the bottom of Xcode where it says view as, and you see it's view as iPhone 11. So once you've made note of that, you're going to go up to the top left corner and it should say a different um, iPhone at the top. So in this case, it actually says iPod touch seventh generation. And we know that that doesn't match the iPhone 11. So if you click on it, you can actually select iPhone 11 and click the play button to run it on a simulator that is built into Xcode. So once we give that a little bit of time to run it, we should see what our application looks like and see those rounded button corners. And just like that, this is what your app looks like off the bat. So if you don't like how it looks, you can always go back into Xcode and alter it. But for now, let's go ahead and dive into the code and how we can get our app to be functional. So in order to do that, you're going to want to click the stop button on the simulator so it doesn't slow down your computer. And so then when you make changes to that app, it doesn't act a little bit funny as sometimes it could. So at this point, we're going to want to actually connect this label since we're going to be changing it into our code, as well as the button since we're going to want the button to do something into the code. So in order to have this connected, we're actually going to go up to this main little section here where you can actually choose to 
have an assistant show up in Xcode. And pretty much this is gonna display your code side by side. And you might be wondering, wow, this looks a little bit busy now. So let's go ahead and close out the attributes panel to give us just a little bit more room. So from this point, we see that view controller we were talking about earlier on the side of our application since it is connected to the view controller in the main storyboard file. So in order to connect our code, we're going to highlight the feature that we want to connect, hold control, and drag it right inside of the view controller class. So in this case, this is going to be our text label. So I'm just gonna call it our main label. Now, in this case, the connection should be an outlet. Pretty much an outlet is something that you can grab information from and change. And so we're going to leave all the default settings and click connect. Now, the only note is to make sure that this is within the brackets of the class, as it is part of the view controller and isn't a separate file. Next, we're going to want to connect the button. And since the button is something that the user is interacting with, we're going to connect it as an action to create its own function within the class. So with this, we're gonna hold control, click and drag it right below this initial view to load function. Now it should load as an action, but if it doesn't, you can go ahead and select action and let's just call it button pressed. You can leave all of the default settings or you can specify a type since it is a UI button sending the notification to the code. So once you can do that, just click connect. Before we set up the button press function, let's actually create an array of our positive quotes. Now an array is pretty much a list in coding and you can create one by saying, defining the let keyword which means to define a variable and we're going to call it array of quotes and we're going to set it equal to and you're going to want two square brackets and this is where you're going to enter in all of the quotes that you want your app to display so i can just start up with something simple and say you are awesome and in order to add another quote make sure that the quotes are actually between two quotes in order to add a second one we're going to add a comma a space our two quotes again and then whatever quote that you want to be entered From that point, go ahead and add all of the quotes you're interested in by pausing the video. Wonderful. Once you've added all of the quotes that you're interested in, we're going to learn how to use them. However, in order to use them properly, we're going to want our click me button to actually randomly select a quote. So then it's not just the same quotes going through a cycle. And in order to do that, we're going to have to create a random number to pretty much choose one of the quotes out of our array list. So in order to do a random number, we're going to define another variable. And let's just call this let random number equal and then we're going to want it to be a whole number. And so we're going to do int dot random. And it's going to ask in what range. And this is pretty much saying, so do you want a number between one and two or one in a million? And you're going to want to tell it exactly how many quotes you have. So in order to figure out exactly how many quotes you have, you actually have to start with the number zero. Because in any array list in Swift or a majority of other coding languages, they actually start counting lists by zero. So be proud of yourself. This is actually at index zero in the array. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So in order to grab the range, we're going to want to find zero, and then we're gonna do two dots, which means zero until including this number. And we're gonna do array of quotes dot count to count how many are in there. And then we're going to do minus one since it starts at zero instead of one. And in order to make it a little bit clearer, let's go ahead and put it in some parentheses. And just like that, it should load a random number in the array. However, you might be seeing a little bit of a problem in your code already. And that is Xcode is alerting you that something is not correct. So if you click on this little red arrow, it's going to tell you cannot find operator dot dot in scope. Did you mean dot dot dot? And that is true. It actually is going to be three periods instead of zero dot dot. It'll be zero dot dot dot. Now, these mistakes happen all the time, and Xcode is really great at alerting you, and actually, you can just click on the fix button for it to fix it itself. And just like that, you've solved your first error. And it's totally normal to encounter errors, because honestly, did not mean to do that intentionally. <laughs> so once you have this point, we're going to want to use our random number to grab something out of the array to change the text on our application. And in order to do that, we can actually finish it all in one more additional line of code. How we did label, grab the text attribute, and set it equal to something new. And in this case, we're going to want to set it to the random quote from our list. So we're going to type array of quotes. If you actually start typing something and click tab, it'll auto load it for you. And then in square brackets, we're going to say which number index we want the quote to be, to be grabbed from. And we want this to be our random number because pretty much this is saying change the text to the random number we grab from the array. And you might be wondering, wow, that's a lot of steps to do all in one line. Well, let's go ahead, go back up to the display button at the top left, run our code and see how it works or if it doesn't at all. Wonderful. So once we click on the click me button, it should load a new quote into this main label. So will it work? 
and we see that it does. Once you keep cooking, you should just go through as many of the quotes that you added and you're all set. So congrats, you've created your first ever iOS application. Or if this isn't your first, then you have a really cool thing to show off to your friends. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. But otherwise, be proud of yourself today because this was confusing, except you rocked it. So thank you so much for watching and happy coding.